No matter how you cut the data, states and our nation won't meet the ambitious attainment goals we've set without inviting people in who would otherwise be left behind. To achieve justice for people who are Black, Hispanic, and Native American through increased learning after high school, we must help people understand why that's important, what systemic barriers exist, and how they can make a difference. Our partners at Hadaway Communications have been hard at work identifying the messages and frameworks that resonate across communities and silos. In this spotlight, you'll hear from Veronica and Rena, who are excited to share a messaging manual that you can use in your seat today. And if you'd like additional information or resources, we invite you to visit Lumina's website under the tab, Talking About Race. Now let's hear from Veronica and Rena. Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Veronica Selzler, and my colleague Raina DeFore and I are from Hadaway Communications, a strategic communications firm that uses the power of strategy, science, and storytelling to help visionary leaders and organizations achieve ambitious goals that benefit people and the planet. We work with foundations and social justice organizations to help them understand and communicate effectively about big, complicated, nuanced ideas and racial equity being one of them. So they came to us with this question uh, that they and their partners had been wrestling with. How do we talk about equity in an authentic way that drives meaningful change? The foundation and its grantees are committed to racial equity, but over and over again, ran into hangups about how to talk about it. How could they ensure that they really understood what they themselves meant when they said equity was a priority? And how could they communicate authentically with people from across the aisle to get meaningful policy change? That is the core of this research and conversation today. Of course, it's more relevant than ever as organizations of all kinds are clarifying their own voice in the national conversation about racial justice. So today we'll share a few research insights and introduce a framework for communicating about equity in meaningful ways that leads us to real change. So starting with those research insights, we'll share a little bit about where this research came from. We started with a review of contemporary research on race and equity communications, and then engaged Lumina's grantees, as well as educators, policymakers, business leaders, other audiences in this space across the political spectrum to understand their goals, how they were communicating about equity and identify core challenges. Our research concluded with a nationally representative survey of 3,100 Americans to test awareness and attitudes about racial equity and messages about the idea. And that survey was fielded in late 2019. So because we know that equity can be a buzzword, we wanted to understand how the everyday American defines equity. So in this national survey that Veronica mentioned, we asked people what comes to mind when you think about the word equity. We gave people two chances to write down what equity means to them. And so as you can see, nearly one out of two people didn't have a relevant definition of equity top of mind. So a relevant definition of equity is anything that we categorize as something that falls within the definition of like the social justice space. So this would be anything such as equality, fairness, same, equal opportunity, or equal outcomes. Although 52% of people gave a definition that was relevant, 48% of people didn't give a definition that we would consider to be something that falls within that space. Instead, what they said was um, concepts such as money, housing, or said that they simply didn't know. This showed us that when you're talking about equity, you can't assume that your audience knows what you mean 100% of the time, because they might not. So you need to be clear about what it means when you say the word equity. And so similarly, our interviews with grantees shows that there needs to be an organizational understanding of equity as well. So as you can see from the quote on the right, equity means a whole lot of different things to a whole lot of different people. So like the quote on the right says, you need to speak with a unified voice. This means that you need to be clear both internally and externally about what you mean when you talk about equity. And another communications best practice when talking about equity is to frame people by their assets. So framing is the first thing that you say about a topic and it can influence the judgments and perceptions that follow. 
Therefore, you need to be very intentional about how you frame equity. When describing people, make sure to describe them by their aspirations and contributions, because this encourages empathy and respect, helping to make the case for why equity is important. So there's two sides of framing, deficit framing and asset framing. Deficit framing is defining people by their problems and ignoring their contributions. For example, this quote on the right defines students by their situation, such as at risk or high crime. This increases social distance between the people that you're working with and the people that you're talking about and the audiences that you're communicating with. The other side of that is asset framing. This is what you want to be activating when you're talking about equity. So asset framing is defining people by their contributions and their aspirations first and acknowledging the challenges that extend on. So for example, this quote defines students as hungry for an education and their goals are learning and achieving whatever it is that they set out for themselves. So you want to be highlighting those attributes of people first. And so when you put these two quotes next to each other, who would you be more motivated to support? So we need to set up communication in a way that communicates in positive terms and reinforces the assets, the people's goals, dreams, and the things that they want to achieve for themselves. Another insight from communications research is to invoke students' goals in terms of opportunities and outcomes. Very often when we talk about equity, we stop at equal opportunity, but it doesn't end there. When we speak about equity, we also want to make sure that we're emphasizing outcomes for students as well. And when we emphasize these outcomes, we want to mention how they're beneficial for both the individual and society at large. So if we know that framing is the first thing that we say about a topic, we want to frame opportunity in a way that emphasizes the importance of racial equity. In order for people to understand why racial equity is needed, they first need to understand that opportunity isn't equal in the United States. So to test this frame, we wanted to understand what the everyday American thinks about opportunity in the United States. So we tested that in our survey. We asked them which statement more closely reflects your point of view. Opportunity isn't equal in the United States or everyone has equal opportunity in America. What we found is that we're starting from a really good place. Nearly 56% of people understand that opportunity isn't equal in the United States. And so we need to make sure that when we're talking about racial equity, that we frame opportunity in a way that emphasizes this idea. Another reminder is to get beyond buzzwords. Buzzwords like equity and justice are, are just that. They signal important issues, but oftentimes they're not clear about what they actually mean. That definition can get muddled. Some people might think they know what they mean by it, but haven't defined it for themselves, or they define it simply in a way that's different from you. So to get beyond buzzwords, paint a picture of what it actually looks like. What specifically are students' goals? Are they looking for a well-paying job in a field that they're passionate about? Do they want the ability to take care of their family? And what does this equity look like in practice, in the classroom, in hallways, at a job interview? So when we asked what comes to mind when you think about the word equity, we coded all of those responses to get a better sense of what actually is on people's mind when they are thinking about it. Here are the three most common ideas we saw. Equality, same, fairness, and some of the ways we heard people describe those ideas. Things like equal treatment or equal opportunity. Same for everyone, fair treatment, fair and impartial. And there are a few things to note when we see these. One is that people don't have a consistent definition of equity. Even those who are familiar with the idea offer a lot of different words and phrases and concepts to describe it. Some wrote about race, other about gender, some wrote about fair access, other wrote about fair outcomes. Number two, these aren't necessarily the ways that we want people to be defining equity. It's not actually what we mean. For example, many people defined equity in terms of where people start out. So opportunity, common word. We know it's important to start there, but we also know that equity means so much more than giving people equal opportunity. And so that is the opportunity that you have to define it yourself. So with this information, we one, can't assume that audiences know what equity means, and two, know there's an 
necessary value in your being explicit about what you mean because the person on the other side might be interpreting it differently. After we establish these aspirations and goals that students or the people that you serve have, it's time to introduce the problem that gets in the way. We know that racial inequities are rooted in systemic problems and they require systemic change. But systems are hard for people to understand and big overwhelming problems can often feel impossible to solve. So make systems real, get specific. Do that by naming the challenges students face in the context of systems that are beyond their control. What are those policies, practices, and beliefs that are holding them back? Keep those in mind as you're thinking about the specific pieces to name of that system. Here's an example of getting specific about systemic barriers from language tested by the Opportunity Agenda, a social justice communications lab. You can see in our education system today, children of color face overcrowded classrooms, uncertified teachers, excessive discipline. You can see they're getting specific about the problem. It gets beyond these true but abstract problem statements like racial inequity or unjust systems. It also provides a clear assessment of a problem in a way that sets you up for a clear set of solutions to solve them. And finally, when we're getting to solutions, don't forget to highlight the shared benefits of equity. Showing how equity can increase opportunity can, for all helps overcome this really tricky idea of zero-sum thinking, which is all over the place in education. Um, it's a dangerous and difficult way of thinking because it traps us in thinking that if I get something, you don't get it, um, or vice versa. Um, so by to overcome this sense of zero-sum thinking, Highlight the shared benefits that come from equity. Talk about how it increases opportunity for all and debunk that myth. Here's how we see that showing up in the opportunity agenda's language. It's in our nation's interest to ensure that everyone enjoys full and equal opportunity. It helps us become the nation that we aspire to be. So after going through these baseline communications uh, things to consider, um, we want to shift to framing racial equity. What is this frame? Um, as Raina has spoken to, the frame is this big idea that you would start out with that invites people to listen and be open to learning more. It's inherently flexible, adaptable for different situations, different communications, but it allows you to start with those core concepts um, that make up a meaningful definition of equity that drives toward action. Everyone has a right to real opportunity. No matter where you come from, what you look like, or how much money your family has, everyone should have what they need to learn, grow, and thrive. People across audiences relate to this value statement. This frame also speaks to real opportunity for everyone because equity doesn't stop at opportunity, as we've discussed. People need to experience it in their lives in tangible, meaningful ways. Opportunity isn't equal. It depends on who you are and where you come from. As we saw, 56% of Americans believe that opportunity isn't equal in the US. Stating that opportunity isn't equal is evocative, but it's not controversial. And it confronts that bootstraps meta narrative that rests on the idea that as long as you work hard, you, you can succeed. Third, our systems of education and training after high school unfairly hold some people back. Policies, practices, and beliefs rooted in history and still affecting people today, keep many Black, Native American, and Hispanic people from the education and skills that they need. Again, across the political spectrum, Americans who are familiar with the concept of racial equity believe that achieving it is an important goal. By providing specific, tangible examples that expose hidden barriers, allows you to make complicated systems-level concepts real for people. And finally, Real actions with real outcomes can make opportunity real. We can remove barriers for students to right the wrongs and achieve just and fair outcomes for all. Audiences agree that support and resources which benefit Black, Native American, and Hispanic communities that have been left behind can also make our systems work more fairly for everyone. Real actions are meaningful actions. So this is how the four ideas hang together Again, these are the components to think about to make sure that you're communicating about equity in meaningful and actionable ways. 
They can guide all types of communications, formal and informal. But they're the core idea is to, again, make sure that you're hitting on and you're not just stopping at real opportunity or you're not getting hung up on the problem, but really covering your basis. Um, I should note that the equity frame we're sharing today was developed for Illumina, who has specific focus and strategic goals. So they are focused on Black, Native American, and Hispanic populations. You might be working with different demographics. That's fine. This is flexible. This is insight for you to be able to adapt to your own work. So I'll turn it to Raina to see what it actually means to apply some of these in some tactical examples. So since Veronica has already introduced you to the racial equity frame, I'm now going to provide some tips and an example of how it can be applied. So as Veronica mentioned, the frame is completely malleable. Um, it can be used in store, store speeches and any other messaging. And so here's an example of how best to use the racial equity frame in storytelling. So through strategic stories, stories with purpose that place specific people in specific situations, you can emphasize these pieces of the racial equity frame and make it more tangible for audiences. So some tips are when you're communicating about the piece about how everyone has a right to real opportunity, make sure to put people in the picture. Start with the protagonist and then talk about their aspirational goals for real opportunity that they share. And then for opportunity isn't equal, make sure that you're identifying the problem. As Veronica mentioned earlier, make visible the systemic barriers to achieving those goals. And to emphasize that our systems of education and training after high school unfairly hold some people back, there use a surprising statistic to people's eyes to the problem. But be careful not to overwhelm your audience with statistics because that's gonna make them feel that the problem is unsolvable. And then for real actions with real outcomes can make opportunity real, show solutions that emerge, celebrate the breakthroughs and illustrate the impact. And again, as Veronica mentioned earlier, when you're illustrating this impact, show how it can be beneficial both on an individual level and for society at large. And so here's a story that lifts up all of those pieces of the racial equity frame. And so I'm gonna read it through and as I'm reading it, look on the screen and see how we've pulled through the racial equity frame and put it into a storytelling format. So living in a tough neighborhood in Ohio, Kamitra C.J. Clardy's mother was very similar to many other moms. She wanted her children to have access to unlimited opportunities. Understanding the importance of education, she not only inspired her son to get good grades, but she also welcomed any solution that helped him overcome the poverty of Youngstown and become the first in his family to attend college. However, the opportunities available in Youngstown's education system didn't match the big dreams that CJ's mom had for her son. As of 2020, the district ranked in the bottom 50% of all 842 school districts in Ohio and had a high school graduation rate of 74%. Luckily, CJ was given a unique opportunity in the sixth grade that ended up changing his life trajectory completely. He was recruited to participate in Ohio State University's Young Scholars Program, which is administered by the university's Office of Diversity and Inclusion. This program is able to fill student preparedness gaps and help students get ready for college. For CJ, the experience with the program was life altering. By the time he was ready to apply for college, he had achieved a 25 on his ACT and earned a full scholarship to The Ohio State University. Knowing early on that he yearned to help Black boys excel, CJ majored in special education at Ohio State with a goal of becoming a teacher in inner city schools. From his brothers to the students, he has become a role model for other Black males from similar backgrounds and has emphasized the importance of investing in education. And so that's an example of how you can take the racial equity frame and apply it in ways that help make it tangible for your audiences through storytelling, again, through speeches, and also any other types of messaging. You can also use the equity frame to consider different ways to use proof points and data. Um, in this example, uh, showing opportunity, painting a picture of what's possible when people have and what they need to have real opportunity the careers, pay, or lives that a post high school credential or degree makes possible. Remind audience of the broader vision for education in America when sharing data that shows outcome gaps. So to show that opportunity isn't equal, it's 
a tendency to speak to gaps. But it's important that when we're covering and comparing outcomes of other races with white students, which is often the case, that perpetuates the sense of white outcomes as default. So find opportunities to speak to that broader average. So in this case, only 43% of students in America hold a credential beyond high school and how that differs for African-American, Native American, and Hispanic people. Rather than uh, getting caught in gaps language that compares people of color and white people, point out gaps in the disparities of the systems themselves. Show differences between the amount and quality of services that students of color receive and how unfairly distributed resources disproportionately hold them back. So in this case, how two and four year colleges spend significantly yet less per year on black and Latino students. And finally, don't forget to use proof points to show what's possible. Share specific examples of actions and what is possible for individuals when you take that action. You can also compare outcomes between places where systems are changing and where they're not. So finally, we invite you to um, review, consider how these best practices might support your own communications and visit Lumina's website um, to learn more and visit more in-depth resources about the research that has informed all of this work today. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you learned something and we're looking forward to seeing what comes out of uh, these conversations. Thank you so much.